probably not the best time for me to be laying down a track about St. Petersburg, Russia. But why not? I've been corresponding with uh, this lady for quite a few months, <clears throat> quite a few months by this point. We'd actually met on Instagram. The Russian people are very interesting. They're to be respected, the people. The Russians that you meet here are, by the very fact that they're here, Do they tend to be of a, a gregarious nature, outgoing? Uh, not the, the norm for the Russian. Uh, certainly not for the Russian man. Max said to me, you, you American men, you smile on the outside, but inside. Whereas we Russian men, we do not smile on the outside, but inside we smile. These are quiet streets you walk. Doesn't matter whether it's midnight or noon, even the hustle bustle of the day. And it's a busy city for like four and a half million people. I've been there a number of times, it's a beautiful city. I don't know that I'll ever see it again, but that is that. Yeah, the Russians are by their nature, very personable people. Very, it's, you know, to get, next to one, so to speak, you know, buddy, buddy, or friendship of any kind, you know, you don't just, doesn't just happen. They're reserved. And if we look back at some of the history of the world, maybe there's a reason for that. My first trip, uh, uh, I got better at the trips, trust me. First trip, uh, day of traveling. I can't afford no direct flight, please. I was sitting outside the airport, just outside the exit at Polkova. Polkova, St. Petersburg Airport. And at this point, what do I speak? Eight words of Russian, 10 words of Russian. If I only knew Pamagitche, help. Of definitely of the SOS nature, help. Pamagitche. Nobody's helping this American out. Uh-uh. It's like I'm a leper, man. They turn it away from me. As I go from one group, small group to the next. Telephone, telephone. <clears throat> and then, you know, say her name. That hell I say her name anyway, it doesn't really matter now. Svetlana. <laughs> I'm sitting there on this bench right outside the exit of the airport. thinking how I'm going to get this woman back. I'm thinking St. Petersburg Hotel. It's a beautiful hotel. A lot of St. Petersburg is beautiful. I'm thinking St. Petersburg Hotel. I hire an escort and I make sure her name's Natalia. Running joke. <laughs> 
Just it's just a running joke between she and I. That's that's what I'll do, and I'll Facebook out of that man. I will Facebook out of that as I take a tour of St. Petersburg, Russia, with, with Natalia, raven hair on my arm. So I'm throwing a little like internal mini temper tantrum because I'm like, you know, you knew. I said, you know, I didn't, I, I, my phone doesn't work. My phone doesn't work. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, I guess I should have told you that sooner. So I'm sitting there. Lana is nowhere in sight. It's, uh, yeah, I usually went around New Year's. I would leave on New Year's Eve. It was a great time to fly. And I've exhausted anybody near me. I mean, I've, I've run through any potential help. And I'm sitting there again. I can always get a taxi. Taxi. Mm -hmm. Sunk Pizza Park Hotel. <laughs> yeah. I know it. <laughs> See? Room service. And I'm talking of the best kind. <gasps> Did I say best? Oh, that was so naughty of me. This young man comes walking up, casually sauntering up. I don't know. The Russian people are still afraid now, believe it or not. Well, not in light of what's happened the last year or two. Yeah, it's much more believable, isn't it? But even up until that point, up until Ukraine, Russian people are not very trusting. They know better. <laughs> they know better. <laughs> They've been burned enough times. So this young man, a handsome, tall guy, man, comes walking up. He's almost underdressed for the weather. He's got like a jacket on. So I'm thinking, yeah, you don't fit. I knew that instantly. I was like, yeah, you don't fit. Are you like security or, you know, airport security? You don't fit. You ain't a traveler. What are you doing? But I mean, I'm, I'm processing all that as he's approaching, uh, getting ready to pass by me. And I was like, hello, excuse me, excuse me. And uh, very, 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 uh, I felt very uh, welcome to disturb him. And, uh, you know, I get it across and he calls the number and, uh, Paka paka, paka paka, you know, bye bye, whatever. And, and I'm looking at him, I'm going, okay, well, I think he just talked to Svalana. Right. I reach into my wallet, and pull out a 20. And he's standing there and he's smiling at me. It's, it's a beautiful, warm smile. He's smiling at me and I hand him a 20 and he's just like, yeah. Like, you know, he shakes his hand. And I'm like, take it. He's like, no, no, no. I threw it at his feet finally, the third time. I threw it at his feet. I crumpled it up. I threw it at his feet. I said, take it. He just smiled. Turned around, walked away. In that same slow gait he had as he approached me. <laughs> A few minutes later, I see this little, this little thing coming at me. Kind of like a crab almost. Kind of, or like an owl might, you know, roll its head around to try to get a, a sense of its surroundings and the sounds, you know. <laughs> she's kind of coming at me. She's kind of walking si back and forth, kind of sideways. I mean, the, <laughs> the proverbial sizing me up. She was scared to death. When I, once I sensed that, Cause I was pissed. I was like, "Girlfriend, you knew I, where the hell you ain't. Where, where's my greeting? Where's the, this this rush? You know, I got a placard that says, you know, <laughs> Mishutka, welcome, Teddy Bear, Mishutka. <laughs> Nothing. Where the hell are you?" And as I watched her walk up to me, side back and forth, just. I and me over, and I was like, she's scared to death. 
And that's when my consternation of any turned to, oh, let's make light of this. <laughs> you know, let's flip this and try to, you know. Happy memory. First time meeting Svetlana face to face. I'll probably never see her again. In light of, you know, everything that's going on. But the main reason I told you the story was not for me and Svetlana and, you know, love lost, love dashed, whatever. The main reason I told you that story is for that young man who didn't fit. He just didn't fit. He wasn't even the man, as far as I'm concerned. And I can smell bacon. I used to kid some of my law enforcement, law enforcement officer friends like, I was the guy you were looking for, so shut up. When I tell you it's that, trust me. <laughs> then laugh, you know. But I meant it. This guy didn't smell of bacon. He didn't fit. He just didn't fit. Now, you can say that that's, uh, you know, I'm reading too much into it. And you're welcome to do that. But I wanted to share that story with you all the same. Because I'm reminded of a story, uh, a, <laughs> a parable or whatever about the man who cries out to God for help and, and God sends him, you know, a, I don't know, a telephone, you know, to make a call or something. And, and the guy just throws the telephone and he calls out to God for, you know, two or three things. And, and it comes down to basically, you know, I sent you a telephone to make an emergency call. And then I sent you a, you know, a Labrador or whatever retriever to, you know, whatever, a carrier pigeon so you can write down, help on a note. How do you want it, dude? How do you want it? How do you want me to come to you to help you? I guess is what I'm coming down to say. It's like that. Keep your head on a swivel. Because like I said in other stories, you should always be on guard for, for, the, for the dark one. But you should also always be ready to receive one of God's. He was probably an apprentice. I'm sure it wasn't an art. It wasn't Michael. Oh, I don't warrant Michael. You think I warrant Michael? Gabriel? Nah. It was probably an apprentice. Yeah. It was probably an apprentice. What would you call an apprentice angel? It's not a seraphim. It's not a cherub. Those have all been taken. What would you call an apprentice angel? I don't know. Somebody get back to me on that. Peace. <laughs>